Hi, I am Jose Wesley from UFMG and today I'll talk about how to use the LLVM metadata to retrieve some information about the source code of a program. In the last class, we've learned what metadata is, we've learned why it's useful, and some of the main types. Now, let's get our hands dirty and see how to use metadata in an LLVM path. Some components of the IR provide methods to get metadata attached to these components. Let's take a look into an instruction. An instruction provides, among others, methods to assess metadata by its index or by its name. For example, this add instruction has this, the metadata with index 20. We can access such metadata using the index 20 or using the name dbg. Both will give us the same return which is a source code location. Similarly, other components provide such methods. For example, global variables functions also have the method to get its attached subprogram. All of these methods return metadata nodes. As we are focusing on using metadata to debug purposes, let's talk about the debug info finder class. It's an LVM utility that finds all the debug information in a module. Debug info finder keeps iterators for all the compile units, all the subprograms, all the global variable expressions, all the types and scopes. So once you process an NVM module, all these informations can be assessed in your path. Let's now build an LLVM path that will reconstruct the signature of functions using metadata. Our path will be a module path. If you have any questions about the structure of a path project in LLVM, watch our classes about writing an LLVM path. Our project here is called Signature Recover. The title of the slides shows the function in which the code is defined. To gather the debug information of the module, we will use the debug info finder. As I said, first of all, we need to process the module. Once the processing is done, we can iterate over the subprograms and analyze each one individually. An alternative approach for get every subprogram is by iterating the IR functions and get each subprogram individually. Notice that both manners are equivalent. Now, let's take some information about the subprogram. We can, in a straightforward way, get the name and the declaration line of the program. We also can get the type of the subprogram. This type is a subroutine type. Pay attention to the ellipses. They mean that this code continues. The subroutine type class contains an array with types that compose a signature of a function. We can iterate this array to assess each type. The first position of the array is the return type of the function. If the element in the first position is null, 
That means a function with no return type, a void function. The other elements are the types of the arguments of the function. In the sequence, our pairs will analyze the type of each argument plus the return if that's the case, uh, if the function returns some value. Notice that we are dealing with a debug type, not an IR type. As we saw last class, a debug basic type represents primitive types of the language. In this case, we define a function to get a string containing the name of the type for printing it. Such function is based on the dwarf tag to identify each type. I won't show the entire function here, but all the basic debug types are treated. You can check the complete implementation in the link in the description. Back into our previous function, we also need to handle debug derived types. Derived types represent qualifier types, such as pointers or reference. In that case, we handle three of the most common derived types. Pointers, const modifiers, and reference. Then, we call the same analyze debug type function recursively, but this time passing the type which is base to the derived type as an argument. Finally, we handle composite types. Composite types represent types, types that are composed by other types, like structures or unions. We deal with those two plus array types. Once again, we are basing on the dwarf tag to identify which composite type this node represents. Taking this program example, which inserts elements in a linked list and then prints them. The output of our pass will be like this. We can see the reports a function called create at line 10 that returns a type node. The argument one is a const integer and the second is a pointer to a variable of type node. And a function main at line 18 that returns an integer. And the argument one has type integer and argument two has type pointer to pointer to chair. We can see that there is a user-defined type called node in this program, but the output doesn't give us more information about this type. So let's add a bonus function in our pads to detail the user-defined types using metadata. We identify debug types based on the dwarf tag as before. When we find a composite type, we can detail each one of its elements, that is, the types that compose it. In this case, each type is a derivative type that represents a field in a composite type. We can get the name of the field and analyze its type using the function that we already defined. We also deal with the typedef keyword to redefine types. In our main method, we use the debug info finder to assess every type found in the module. And if we find a user-defined type, we can now detail it. Now, the output also brings information about user-defined types, making the output more complete. So that's all for today. We had learned how to use metadata in an LVM pass and how to retrieve some information about the source code program. In the next class, we shall see how to track a variable across optimized code, across optimized IR.
to there you feel free to write me with questions and comments. You can find the reference and links in the description together with a link to the past implementation that we use in this video. There is also a link to a video from LLVM's developers meeting that cover metadata in more detail.